Hello friends and followers. So today we're going to make braised short ribs. I know most people re relate this to a high-end fancy meal, but it's super easy, though I thought I would share it. So first we're going to take two carrots and celery and an onion and cut, get them all cut down so we can put them through the chopper because again, I didn't want to chop anything this day. The chopper is also nice because it takes those ribs out of the celery, but we're just going to go ahead and chop these all up to get them all nice and diced evenly. And then once that's done, we're going to set it aside. And we're going to get all of our herbs together. And this just makes it easier for processing later. That way you don't have to stop and measure everything as you put it in. Set that aside. We're going to take the short ribs and we're going to salt and pepper all sides of them. Don't do it like I did and do salt and pepper at the same time. I had to go back through and add pepper because I wasn't very smart that day. But anyway, you want to get them nice and covered. And then we're going to use a Dutch oven. So you're going to put that over medium high heat with some oil. You're going to have to do this in batches because you want to make sure all sides of the meat are flat with the surface. Again, we're just going to sear all four sides. It's not too crooked. It's just to sear it and it adds flavor to the pan. As you see, there's even more oil now. And we're going to reduce that down to about three tablespoons. And then we're going to add our veggies. We're going to cook these down until brown or nice and sauteed. Most of the veggies should be translucent. Add the garlic, cook it for another minute, and then we're going to add our tomato paste, and we're going to saute this down a little bit. This enhances the flavor. We're going to add a little bit of flour also. This will create a roux, if you will. So we're sauteing that down. We're adding the red wine to deglaze the pan, and I do highly suggest using a Dutch oven and a wooden spoon so you don't scratch or hurt anything, but you can use another pot if you do. Um, then we're going to add all the ribs back to the pot and the juices from the plate as well as the stock. We just want to make sure it's covered. So it could be more or less um, in versus the instructions. We're going to add rosemary and salt and pepper. And then we're going to let this simmer on the stovetop uncovered for about 20 minutes. Um, we will go in with a wooden spoon and kind of joust it around. Then we're going to pop it in the oven for about two and a half hours. Once it is done in the oven, this is where you the final product. Then we're going to take all of the meat and put it in a separate bowl. We're going to strain out the juices and I find the strainer and there is a pan under that to catch all the juices. We're just going to mush that around with a silicone spatula to get all the juices out. As we want that juice to make our au jus or gravy, whichever you would like to call it. Then we will skim off a lot of the fat because there's a lot of fat that comes off the meat. Um, I did a lot of this off camera, but I just wanted to show you a little bit. Then we're going to add the remaining juice back to the Dutch oven on a medium high heat. And we're going to reduce this by about half. You will notice it will start thickening. You can always use a metal spoon. And when it starts sticking, you know it's more of a sauce, if you will. You can reduce this further if you want it thicker. Then I just took it and plated it with some rice. You can make it with mashed potatoes, cauliflower, anything to put that lovely gravy over. I call it liquid gold. So if you guys like this and try this, please let me know. And let me know what you do different. Uh, what do you plate it with? What do you eat it with? And don't forget to like and subscribe for future things to come.